know we have to ask. BVOD. Broke bitches on decline? I figured you were going to say so. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that beef start? Was it was it really because of Cisco? And, and, or was it the Gwen Fest? I wouldn't consider it beef. Because beef for me is like, I'm at your front door. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's beef for me. Um, You know. But um, I, I would just say that it was, you know, some fuckery. Because it's like, you know... Obviously, we're on the show, so it's made to be, you know, dramatic and stuff like that. But um, we just had a conversation about this the other day. Like, I don't know Mo from a can of paint. I've never seen Lexi a day in my life. I've never heard of a BBOD before. I mean, you know, so with that being said, it's like question mark, you know. And um, going into the, you know, the single release party, you know, I had I was just going to support. Like, even... Right now, you know, as much as I don't like Mo and I don't like Lexi and I never will like them, as a woman, I still want them to win. I want the females to win. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't like them because I feel like, you know, Mo, personally, for me, she, you know, I, we call her ugly a lot through the season. And, you know, what makes her ugly to me is not her outside. It's the inside. You know, she always just a nasty person. Like, she has this aura, like... You know, and then she st tries to steal my lines and stuff like that. So, you know, VH1 didn't hold a gun to her head or a knife to her throat and s make her slap that drink out of my hand or come sideways at Mariah Lynn. And that's where I would say, you know, our little thing happened because I just don't tolerate disrespect. I understand that. Now, mm -hmm. you said that she may have stole your lines. Yeah, she definitely did steal my lines. Um, she has a, a record coming out. Um, I'm sure you guys heard it on the show. It's called 100 Bottles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, anybody who does pay attention to Mariah Lynn and actually pays attention to the music, because that's what's supposed to be being paid attention mm -hmm. to, um, they would know that when I did my freestyle for VH1, I said, um, not even Yandy would touch that man's DC. And in 100 Bottles, she said, my men in D.C. say I'm Yandy. Like, she didn't even say it better than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least if you're going to remake something or try to, you know, clone it, do it the right way. So you pretty much told her just be original. Just be original. Just just be mo, you know? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Wrong with that. Right. Now, talk about this love tri triangle you have between her and Cisco because... There's no love triangle. I mean, she was dating him. I came along. He saw me, and that was that. <laughs> Deuces. All right, you can move on to the next question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's you and Cisco's current relationship now? Me and Cisco right now, um, you know, we're kind of like... I wouldn't say off and on. I would just say more or less, you know, I have... Um, I've bonded with Cisco on another level. You know, we both come from struggle. Um, we both come from a background where our parents weren't always there for us. And I feel like, you know, Cisco kind of understands, you know, that side of me. But um, as of right now, you know, we're still just talking. Like, I wouldn't say we're dating like we were on the show as, as closely like that. But, you know, he, I mean, he just called me, you know, a little while ago checking on me. So it's just, I guess it's like a mutual you know, we'll see where it goes. Okay. I'm sampling right now. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got to do that. Mm -hmm, yeah, especially if the appetizers is half off. Shit, bring me two of them shits. <laughs> <laughs> now, you got to ask you also about Richie, Richie Dollars. Bitch Dollars. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. You said it, not me. Yeah. <laughs> so what all happened? How was that past relationship? Um. See, the thing with Rich is there's always a motive, like I mentioned earlier, you know. Um, I feel like, you know, when I got casted for the show, mm. um, they, of course, asked you if you know any cast members. And I did say that I knew him because I, everybody knows me for being very blunt and very raw and not giving a fuck. So, um, yeah, I told them I knew him, but I didn't want to say that we had a past as far as, like, sexually. So, um, I didn't have any type of connection to his storyline or him to me. And he went over my head you know, to one of the bosses and said, well, she's lying, you know? So that basically made me look bad, one. Right. And two, it also forced me to have a storyline with him because we had a past together. So um, before I got casted, you know, I, I dated Rich on and off for about three years. I wouldn't even say dated. It was just more or less like, I see you when I see you, when I want you, when I want you, and when I don't, I don't. Keep it moving, you know? Um, 
the six minutes, it was, you know, more or less three minutes down under. So, I mean, you know, half time, blow the whistle, come back up, you know, whatever. And um, pretty much, you know, it was what it was. And like, you know, I hate the fact that he is such a liar and a hypocrite. Like, you know, you say you wanted no connection to my storyline, that's a lie. You know, you say you're still in love with Moni Slaughter, like, that's a lie. You say you did not contact me while you were with her, that's a lie. You know, so let's just clear the air. You know, right. I never smashed Cisco, not to this day. And, um, you know, I feel like Rich tries to be, you know, where the checks are. Of course you're back in love with Moni Slaughter by episode 12 reunion because you got to fly back to L.A. to get that check. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean, like, a motive. And that's why I can't respect Rich anymore. Once upon a time, not long ago, I might have. But now I just... Being on the show, I've learned a lot, and I see what the cameras and the lights can do to people. Now, I also saw you put out a text message, or a right. screenshot, rather, From of the a loser. conversation. And <laughs> he, he also responded, but what was that about? I mean, I have plenty of screenshots, but, you know, that's not even in my character. I more or less was like, you know what? I'm tired of him trying to be you know, fake for the cameras. Right. Like, stop trying to front for the gram. Stop trying to, you know, front for social media and make you seem like you this, you know, player, player, Don Juan, dust the dust off your shoulders. Like, no, like, you used to be texting me if I love you, you know, stuff like that. And the text message said it all. Like, do you love me? No. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And he said it just like you to be in touch with your, you know, your feelings. And... I just don't want to be in touch with feelings that got to do with you. <laughs> now, you, you did mention Moni Slaughter a little earlier, from what I was so earlier. She put out some tweets when you, when you first appeared on the show. Right. And, you know, honestly, like, I don't, right now I don't even want to speak about her because, you know, she kind of is just um, gum under my shoe at this point, you know, and I done threw the shoes away. You get me? So, like. Shoes distract. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, you know, I just feel like, honestly, um, again, I don't know you. I don't know you. And the first episode was not even pertaining to Rich. So what reason did you have to come at me? Was it because you saw me up there sitting so, so very pretty? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you hating because I'm 25 years young and you're not? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I just feel like, Women like Moniece, especially being that you're already, you know, have wrote. Moniece is very talented, let me just say. She's very talented, and I would never take that away from her. I always give credit where it's due. That's but don't say. try to take away from me. You know what I'm saying? And then when she spoke on my family, don't speak on my family. Because once you bring family involved, like, you know, flights start getting booked. And I start showing up on your door with my Tims and my sweats. And... I just feel like we'll cross paths. Like, it's a small industry, and, you know, this conversation, well, not even a conversation, will take place. But when I see her, I will see her, and it'll be known. I'm sure it'll be somewhere on YouTube or something. People Maybe think it's even cool. World Star. Who knows? She didn't take it too personally. People think it's cool to talk about people's families these days. Yeah, and that's not cool. That's violation. You know what I'm saying? Is. So, whatever. Don't have kids if you're going to leave your baby father to do the job for you. Him kind of crying and me crying so you know what I mean it's just it was no more the word a couple of days later they tell me he died how did you feel when they, um, when they said that I mean did you know that he was gonna die with it no the tubes no 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 uh-uh give me a second no. to go through all you went through and your end result is being killed in a drive-by affiliation is like is like way beyond the aspect of 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 because you could have been here and left a, a way better mark. 